students, welcome back to the science class. In this unit, you're going to learn about the immunity or the defense systems again. The disease or infections. So without further ado, let's begin our lesson. A mosquito lands on your arms, injects its chemicals into your skin, and begins to feed. You wouldn't even know it was there if not for the red lump that appears, accompanied by a telltale itch. It's a nuisance, but that bump is an important signal that you are protected by your immune systems. Your body's major safeguard against infections, illness, and disease. The system is a vast network of cells, tissues, and organs that coordinate your body's defenses against any threats to your health. Without it, you'll be exposed to billions of bacteria, viruses, and toxins that could make something as minor as a paper cut or a seasonal cold fatal. The immune systems or defense systems in humans are divided into two types. First, external defense systems. Second, internal defense systems. External defense systems is natural barriers and the immune systems defend the body against organisms that can cause infections. Natural barriers include the skin, mucous membranes, tears, earwax, mucus, and stomach acid. Our biggest organs is in fact our skin. The skin covers the whole body, protecting our insides from the physical damage. Microinfections and dehydrations, the skin acts as a physical barrier which is difficult for the microbes to penetrate. But that's not all. The species glands on our skins secrete acids which make the skin acidic and prevents the growth of pathogens so our skin does a great job. But what about the pathogens entering through our nose, mouth, or eyes? Tears, mucus, and saliva all contain the lysosomes enzymes that breaks down the cell walls of the mini bacteria. Our respiratory system has many lines of defense as well as the enzymes. Firstly, nasal hair keeps out dust and larger organisms. And then, for the sneakier microbes that get through, there's a sticky mucus which traps them and little hairs called cilia to sweep out the dirty mucus. Fall over and catch ourselves, luckily our blood has its own defense mechanisms, preventing the wound from becoming infected. The blood contains platelets and fibrin, which cause the blood to clot and form a scab. Don't worry about swallowing pathogens. The hydrochloric acids in our stomach is really strong and kills most of the harmful microorganisms. That might be enough, our defense doesn't stop there either. Friendly bacteria in intestine stops other harmful bacteria taking over. If pathogens to get past our physical barrier, which is known as the general defense systems, our second line of defense takes over and this system is pretty feisty. The systems called internal defense systems. Internal defense systems is the body's defense systems by white blood cells. These include the inflammatory response, phagocytosis, natural killer cells, and the complement systems. Before we learn about the internal defense systems, there are a few terms that you need to know. First, endogens is a substance that is foreign to the body and stimulates an immune response. Second, Antibody is a glycogen proteins or immunoglobins made by the plasma cells derived from the B lymphocytes secreted in response to an antigen. Third, immune response is the complex series of the response of the body to the entry of the foreign antigens. Non-self refers to any substance or cell that is recognized by the immune systems as being foreign and will stimulate an immune response. Fifth, self refers to the substances produced by the body that the immune system does not recognize as foreign, so they do not stimulate an immune response. The immune system relies on millions of defensive white blood cells, also known as the leukocytes, that originate in our bone marrow. These cells migrate into the bloodstream and the lymphatic systems 
a network of vessels which helps clear bodily toxins and waste. Our bodies are teeming with leukocytes. There are between 4,000 and 11,000 in every microliter of blood. As they move around, leukocytes work like security personnel, constantly straining the blood, tissues, and organs for suspicious signs. These systems mainly rely on cues called antigens. These molecular traces on the surface of the pathogens and other foreign substances betray the presence of invaders. As soon as the leukocytes attack them, it takes only minutes for the body protective immune response to kick in. Threats to our bodies are hugely variable, so the immune response has to be equally adaptable. That means relying on many different types of leukocytes to tackle threats in different ways. Despite this diversity, we classify leukocytes in two main cellular groups, which coordinate a two-prong attack. First, Phagocytes trigger the immune response by sending macrophages and dendritic cells into the blood. As they circulate, they destroy any foreign cells they encounter simply by consuming them. That allows phagocytes to identify the antigens on the invaders they just ingested and transmit these information to the second major cells group orchestrating the defense, the lymphocytes. Phagocytes are produced throughout life in the bone marrow. They are stored there before being distributed around the body in the blood. Phagocytes include macrophages and neutrophils. Macrophages are also phagocytes, but are larger than neutrophils and tend to be found in organs such as the lung, liver, spleen, kidney, and limb nodes, rather than remaining in the blood. After they are made in the bone marrow, macrophages travel in the blood as the monocytes, which develop into macrophages once they leave the blood and settle in the organs, removing any foreign matters found there. Macrophages are long-lived cells and play a crucial role in initiating immune responses. Since they do not destroy pathogens completely, but cut them up to display antigens that can be recognized by the lymphocytes. Neutrophils are a special group of white blood cells that play an extremely important role in protecting the body against infections. Major neutrophils do not divide. New neutrophils are constantly formed in the bone marrow where they develop and mature. Major neutrophils are released into the blood where they circulate for the 3 to 12 hours and then move to other tissues where they survive only for 2 to 3 days. These major neutrophils can be found in large and small blood vessels as well as in the tiny capillaries in different tissues in the bloodstream. Neutrophils act as surveillance cells searching for infections. Neutrophils can sense a site as infections because of the chemicals that are released by the bacteria. Upon detecting these chemicals, neutrophils slow down and begin to stick to the walls of the blood vessel. They then squeeze between the cells of the blood vessel's wall and enter the infected tissue. Here, the neutrophils crawl towards the infections as they continue following the chemical signals at the sites of infections. Bacteria are coated with antibodies of the immune systems and marked for ingestions. Neutrophil recognizes the marked bacterium and chills it into its body and traps the bacterium in a sac called aphagosomes. The neutrophils contains pouches called lysosomes, which are full of digestive enzymes and chemicals that can kill bacteria. The pouches or lysosomes then combine with the phagosomes containing the bacteria and release the enzymes and chemicals resulting in the ultimate death of the bacterium inside the neutrophil. After killing and digesting the bacteria, the neutrophil is spent having completed its duty. The neutrophil shrinks in size and breaks up into smaller pieces that can be recognized and eaten by other cells. 
I think that's all about our lesson today. Don't forget to do the SSS on my mother. Bye!